Hello everyone, Kim Victoria here and in today's video I am going to do a partial tutorial and then flip through of these two little journals. Uh, this one, I they kind of did them at the same time, so the tutorial part is going to be a mashup between this one and this one, and hopefully you'll get some good ideas from it. I have a little chart I'm going to put on screen in a few minutes. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll just start with the tutorial and then I can follow up with the last little bits of how things were done after that. Okay, so let us proceed. Before I cut my scrapbook paper, I want to mention, and you may already know this, but there is a grain to the paper. And what I'm going to look for here is which direction does the grain flow? And I find on this piece of paper, there's resistance. And this way, it's very easy. And I found when doing this particular design, I find that having the grain going this way works a little better for me um, because then you know down here on these they're going to go these folds are going to go against the grain so you might get a little bit of cracking on some paper uh, and i'd rather have it on these bottom folds than on my long folds also because this is the grain there it's going to be a little bit sturdier i have found so that's just something to look for so on this one i can see that is the correct grain so i want to leave it aligned that way Okay, that one is the correct grain, and yep. Okay, so now I'm going to go cut those and come back. All right, so I have cut, I have cut my papers, and we're going to use these offcuts. If not in this project, we will use them in another project. So we want to hang on to those. So now that I have these, these all correspond to this shape. And now we want to do our folding. I am going to use a scoreboard. And I don't have a big one, but a small one works just fine. You just have to do a little moving around with it. So on this first one, I'm going to go four inches. And I just need to move it up a bit to finish that. And it's much easier just to turn it around because it's four, four, and four. Okay. And then I want, I can go to six inches or I can do two and a half because that's, that's what this is indicating. We want a six inch, a four by six inch piece on each of those. And then the remainder will be two and a half and that's gonna be our pockets. All right, so I'll just go to six and move it up a bit so that I can do the whole thing. I found this scoreboard at a thrift shop. You just never know what you're going to find at thrift shops. And I only paid 50 cents for it. Awesome. It didn't have the bone folder, but I have a bone folder, so I, I don't miss that at all. So scooch it up. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and fold these and keep, get that going. And make sure my folds, and that, so it's a valley fold. It's coming up like this, mountain fold goes the other way. And you got to see me do a boo-boo. I did this one wrong. 
I gotta go get another piece of paper. I'll be right back. Okay, so this you know, <laughs> the only problem with making videos is sometimes I get so involved in the video that I forget to pay attention to what I'm doing. And this is what happened is I did these two correctly. I did that one and that one, but I didn't do that one correctly. So let's try that again, shall we? The middle one needs to be two, four, four, two. All right, let me get that straight this time. Fortunately, there's certainly not a problem with enough paper. All right, so two. And two and four is six, so I'm on the six line. And two. Okay. And this direction will be the same. This will be six inches. Make sure it stays put. All right, so what we want is a mountain fold in the middle. And two valley folds. All right, we're ready to do some cutting. And here's the here's the thing with cutting. I'm going to go ahead and this is uh, da, 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 Valley Valley Mountain, Valley Mountain. OK, and then this this one goes this way. This is the center section now. OK, all right. So we know that these are going to be flaps. And I have a little X there, so we know we need to remove this section. Now, I, instead of just going straight on the fold line, I'm going to go a little bit to the left of that fold line. Because that reduces bulk when it's uh, flipped up as a pocket. And this one, I'm going a little bit light. Come on. And on this one, I'll go to this side a little bit so that it reduces the bulk. And in the middle, I want to do the same thing because when these are flipped over to the other side, we want to have a little less bulk. So we want to go to either side of the line by just a teeny bit. Come on. And if you're good with using a knife, use a knife. I happen to be pretty good with scissors, so I'm going to use scissors. And these are going to go in opposite directions, but we can get it started because we want to do the same thing. We want to separate these flaps a little bit to the right of the fold, only just up to here, and a little bit to the left of the fold. Let's take that off a little bit to the right. And a little bit to the left. And Margaret demonstrates this whole process very well in her Seven Plaza on YouTube. But I'm just doing it with a little bit different dimensions a little bit different setup. So here's here's what all of this is going to turn into. So these two flaps are going to go on this opposite side, and these flaps come up, so that's the valley. So then we have, this will get inserted in there, it'll get glued in, and that goes up. 
that one goes to the back. That one goes that side, so that, that. Get to, uh, I had it backwards. All right, see if you pay attention to my chart and not what I'm doing, it'll all come out very nicely. There we go, all right. Because we want that to go in there. We want this line to be hidden inside this fold. It just, it makes a really nice edge, which you'll see in the finished product. product. Okay, so we have that, and that's gonna go there. So that's a mountain, and that's a valley. And it gets a little bit funny to keep manipulating while you're doing this, but it all comes together in the end, and it's really nice. Okay, all right, I got it. Okay, so there you go. You can see how that's coming up. There. Okay. There it is. All right. Now, before I glue anything, I want to do decoration, embellishment, uh, rubber stamping, collage, whatever it is I want to do, I want to do it now before I glue these pockets and these flaps closed. So I'm going to make some decisions on what I'm going to do, and I'll be back. So what I did was I picked out what rubber stamps I wanted to use, and this is the Scottish Journal. So I picked out stamps from my collection and laid them out like this so that I could uh, kind of get an idea of what I wanted to do. So all I want to do here is show you how I went from white paper to vintage paper without tea dyeing, coffee dyeing, that sort of thing. You probably already know, um, but it's, it's just good to kind of go over it a little bit again. So what I have here is set up for the next stamping that I want to do. And I'm not going to show you all the stamping. Uh, just just this one little snippet to give you an idea of how I'm doing it. So I'm using the acrylic blocks. If you have one of the large stamp positioners, I certainly recommend you do that and uh, makes it makes life a little bit easier. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it this way. I've lined up my acrylic block straight with the edge of this other side so that... I'm using that as my stamp positioner. There we go. Yes. Friend out of the way there. And the same thing for this one over here. Line it up with edge. Yes, indeed. Good. And then Keegan. Make sure he's nice and straight. Then I did my little border with green, so I'm going to do green over here with this border piece. Okay. Now just give that a moment to dry a little bit. These dry very quickly, which is good. 
I'm using a variety of different inks for this whole project. I love the distress inks. I also love my memories inks. Uh, this one is an India ink black. It makes this really intense black image, which is nice. And you know, there's lots of good blacks on the market and you have your favorite. You could also emboss these. So I'm just going very simple for this project. And these are my own little daubers that I made. I like them because they're rounded and they're uh, I can squish them <laughs> into different shapes. And I have a video on that, so I will put that video link in the description box. All right, so now that I have all this set up, I'm not concerned about this panel because this is going to get hidden but I don't need to over ink this side. So let's hide that. And the technique that I use is a very light hand. I think I can go a little darker with this because I think my pad is drying out a little bit. And I want to get a little bit of that vintage look going. As I didn't want to wrinkle up this paper now I'm putting a little more pressure on this because this ink pad is a little bit on the dry side. So I'm just going to use that a little bit. I've been experimenting with a lot of different things. So now I'm going to go with this one. This one I know is nice and moist, so I'm going to take it, take it light on this one. Yeah, I'm barely touching the paper. Just light, very light. I'll mask this part. Okay. And one left touch. So this is where I want to get a strong edge. We got a little extra smudging and distressing. And then just like with the, the Piper and the Dancer here, I don't want him floating in space. So I'm just gonna use this brown pencil and put him on some ground. Add a little dimension. He needs some uh, kind of a leather color here. Let's see. Sort of a saddle brown, I think. I always like to come back to colored pencils. They add so much. This fellow, I did these drawings. I did all these drawings. So I did this drawing uh, from a, a reenactor who posed for me. I sure appreciated that. And he's hopefully still enjoying his rubber stamp. <laughs> All right, I think that's pretty good. Uh, maybe a little, just a touch of hunter green in that kilt, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a light touch. Okay. All right, good enough. All right. So I have these two panels done. This happens to be the center panel. I'm going to be rubber stamping 
these flaps as well. So when I get all done with the stamping on all the panels, we'll come back and take it to the next stage, okay? All right. All right, I have finished the rubber stamping. So let's let's see, before I do any more assembling, let's let's take a look at what I've done. So there's there's the whole thing. It's still not put together yet. I still have it in sections. So on this first section, this is like uh, this is going to be the cover. Well, it's going to be the front cover. <laughs> there's sort of two covers to this one. Uh, so the flaps are not glued down yet, but uh, this is the theme is Scotland. So that's everything in here is from. Well, they're my rubber stamps. They're not available anymore. Um, but those of you who do have my stamps, this is just another idea of what you can do with them. So this is a, going to be a mini journal, as you know, as I've mentioned. So here are, here are the images I've done. And on the flip side, one of these flaps is going up. So that one's not down yet either. And there's going to be tags and goodies in here. I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> so there is section number one. And here is section number two, which I demonstrated that panel. So there's section number two. And it has two flaps that come around to the back. So there's the two flaps. Chose Scotty Dogs for that. And that's section number two and section number three, two flaps this way and one the other. And I used the Celtic knot designs and one of my thistle designs. And there's another thistle that will be glued down back here. So this is pretty straightforward at this point. And now I'm pretty sure I'm ready to glue. Ah, one more thing. So here we go. This is this is how it's going to get assembled. Those flaps will get glued so that there's a pocket. And what I wanted to do was since this side is all about pockets and putting things in pockets, this side has pockets but I wanted to put in journals, little little miniature journals. So let's uh, let's review that for a moment because being of Scottish theme and being small, I made four little journals to fit in here. And this is where I used clip art. So you can find a lot of clip art now on my Etsy shop. If you're interested in clip art, all of the images that are stamped here, you could actually arrange with clip art because all of these images I made available as clip art. So you could do these on sheets of paper and paste them in instead. It just so happens I have all the stamps because I made them, right? But if you don't have some of these, they're all available as clip art, and that link will be in the description below. So you could do all this exact same thing. And one of the key things I found out is that you can print on tea dyed and coffee dyed paper. What I did was I had all of this tea dyed paper, and I went, well, I don't know. It's just the slightest bit wrinkly, but I put it under some weight for several days and it came out flat enough that I'm running it through my printer. So I laid out some pages. It just so happens that I didn't keep any on cut. So <laughs> bear with me on that. But what I did was here is almost a letter size sheet of paper, A2. And because I was making this little journal to fit basically a half sheet of A2. I printed it out on one side, the clip art, laid it, well, I laid it out in a program. You could do this in Canva. If you don't have a graphics editor, 
you could do it in Canva. In the description, I do have a recommendation for a wonderful graphics editor if you want to get one of your own, but you can actually take the clip art and import it into Canva and do your own printout with the clip art, which is really cool. So nothing on the back side, but I did indent them enough because I knew I would have to cut off a couple of edges. So cut it this way, fold it in half. I also cut some plain paper, nested them together, trimmed them so they're nice and flat. So there's really only three folded pages, but you know, three times four sides, that's 12 sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 12 folded sides. So I'm going to put the castles in signature place number one. And this is where we've got some pipers and pipes. So I have some piper images in this signature. And that's number two. Number three, I went with athletics. So this little journal, and then I have some Scottish dogs, Karen, Border Collie. Greyfriars Bobby is in Edinburgh. So Greyfriars is, uh, this is a statue. It's a wonderful story, Greyfriars Bobby. Unfortunately, I didn't indent him quite enough. Something to keep in mind when you're using clip art and having to trim and a Sheltie. And these are the kinds of dogs that you would see at the Scottish games. So what I've created here is like a little Scottish games journal. So one of the things that happens at Scottish games is passports. A lot of the clans, the family groups, they have little emblems, Scottish badges, and they go and you can go around the kids. This is something for the kids to do is to go around and get imprints of those rubber stamps. Well, this could be a passport book. It also could be something the family does where they write their impressions about the Scottish games. So that's kind of what I have, or maybe they're a piper or a drummer, some kind of musician. There might be something that they want to add and write in a little mini journal about that. Maybe they do athletics. Maybe their dad does athletics or their mom. Maybe they're a reenactor such as this uh, image depicts. And maybe they're involved with the dogs or Highland dancing. So this could be just a little memoir book too. So that is what is going to happen. So we'll come back to this. I wanted you to see my thought process as I'm creating this little mini journal and how I'm putting it together. So now I'm gonna sew these in. So I will be back after I do that. So where I left off with this one was to sew in the signatures and do some final embellishing. And one of the things I did was, you'll see on uh, Scottish bagpipes, tassels. And so this one I decided it would be really cute with tassels. And I think that is kind of cute. And we just have a little wrap around here. Now on the cover, this is a bit of ribbon. I removed the wire. This was wired ribbon. So I removed that. And I left this blank. Some people want you know, um, this book belongs to or something like that. One of the things I have in my collection is, since this is a Scottish themed journal, I printed out, uh, this is a rubber stamp, but it's also available as a piece of clip art on my, uh, in my collection for Scottish people. So that could be pasted on and then it could be this book belongs to. But as I wanted to leave it as an option, I have it in this pocket. So you saw some of the rubber stamping. I just used some of the little scrappy bits left over from making the journal to just have a few little, little taggy things and put that label in there. And here's how the, the clip art came out. 
And what I did in this journal is before I added things to pockets and such, I ran it under the sewing machine. So I haven't done it that way before, but I used the very longest stitch and back stitched it front and back. But since there were only three sheets of paper to stitch in, I thought, well, I'm going to try that. And it worked out fine for these. So all of these little signatures are stitched in. And then I made a little book, a little uh, notepad kind of thing, a bit of that ribbon. And, you know, these little fabric ribbons, I did fray it a bit so that added a little extra fun to it. And again, this is stitched in with the sewing machine. First time I've ever done that. It worked fine. You have to be careful, though. You definitely want to have to uh, use these bulldog clips and hold everything really tight so that it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't, the paper doesn't wander on you. Okay, so you've seen all of those. I just made a couple of little tag things for this side of the accordion journal. Stitching, another little taggy thing, which of course you can add to, and then we keep going. So on this one, I made one of those little mixed scrappy bits of paper as a little notepad, and I just stapled it. Another little bit of that ribbon. Something very simple, kind of playful. Always have extra pockets, so it's good to make extra little goodies to go in the pockets. These are just a couple of matching tags, some more of that ribbon. Another one of those waterfall notepads with some of the leftover tea dye paper. Another little taggy bit. And we're back to the beginning. And there you have it. There is the uh, Highland Memories Scottish Mini Journal. Because I made a Scottish journal, I also wanted to make an Irish journal. And I have lots of green scrapbook paper. And a lot of us, you know, when we think of Ireland, we kind of think of green. You know, it's a very green island. Um, not so much the flag, really. I guess I could have included orange, but hey, that's all right. So I didn't show the rest of the making of this one. I just showed making the structure. And then there was the Scottish journal. So I gave you tips on that one. This one I did a little bit differently. So let's go through it. One of the things about Irish dancing is that they have buckles on their hard shoes. And I have this little uh, punch that is a buckle. So I have this shamrock ribbon I picked up after St. Patrick's Day this uh, this past St. Patrick's Day. I punched out three of these buckle shapes, pasted them together, glued them together so it would be nice and stiff. This is very, very stiff. And glued on this ribbon, which fits nicely in here, and just created this little belt. This is also, I just hand cut out these layers of paper so that they would create a little sandwich around the ribbon and it makes it nice and stiff for going through the hole and buckling the whole journal together. And it's held in place by this back panel. It's glued on so it can't get lost. All right, I also, I don't have a shamrock punch, but I do have a heart punch. And shamrocks look like three hearts, so. I was using these papers in the decoration of this journal. So I have all these little scrappy bits. There you go. All right. And it's my rubber stamps. There's a little four-leaf clover stuck in there. This is an accordion journal also. And I did a lot of the same things, but also some different things. So the other one has the Scotland in the front. I put Ireland in the front. Again, I used a lot of rubber stamps in here, but they're all available as clip art. It's just a little journaling spot, or this book belongs to, or you could put that there. And I made clusters for this one. So 
I've been seeing a lot of the journal makers making these these little clusters of different things. And I just stuck with the shamrock theme with this. It's fun and it's cute. And I enjoyed it very much. This is a rubber stamp. And this is a piece of the thin kind of scrapbook paper. And you could cut scrapbook paper to eight and a half by 11 if that's what size your printer is or, or A4 if you're in another country. And you could lay clip out clip art out <laughs> in a document and print it out on your printer. So clip art has a lot of options. So in this one, I really focused on the Irish music and dance for the clip art. Did the same thing as I did in the Scottish journal, laid it out, printed it, allowed a nice wide margin because I knew I would be trimming it and did a lot of my clip art. And I inserted a little bit of extra paper. You could use these as coloring books too. Uh, most of these Irish images are line art and you can color them. So this is another option for when you're making one of these is these could all be coloring book pages with certain kinds of clip art. I mean, you know, why not? As well as journaling spots. I did all these drawings, of course. Mostly from my own photographs. I knew bands and they would set up their instruments for me. It was wonderful. I also sewed these in with the three hole pamphlet stitch method. And you can see I made a guide so that all of my holes would line up. So just, I've been learning from all of these journal makers out there and it's just having so much fun. This I made as a little flip up. We have layers, rubber stamped image, cut out, colored, glued onto this little flappy bit. Made a couple of these little notepads. And with, what I did here is I did rubber stamp these before I glued this little pocket down. And then I used a white colored pencil to make it pop out more. So there's a little bit of green colored pencil in the petals, the leaves actually, and a white colored pencil to make it stand out a little more. Another one of the clusters, a rubber stamp that I fussy cut out and just punched out a circle, a dark green circle. Some uh, not work, some more instruments, Irish dancers. And just a piece of scrapbook paper with a little rubber stamping. Some not work. More Irish dancers. Another notepad, a little bit different design, ribbon, rubber stamp, and hand sewn. Did this a little bit differently. Every one of the clusters is a little different. So, you know, played around. Another flip up. That was one of my most popular rubber stamp designs. It's available as clip art now. But yeah, this one even got stolen and other companies were using it and claiming it as their own. I have the old original files. I mean, this was mine. Um, I had fun drawing all of these images. It was a big part of my life. A very big part of my life. Started it in 1996. That's when this whole thing started. And then I just kept drawing and creating new rubber stamps. Just there's this bittersweet aspect to letting go of the rubber stamp aspect. But that's why I had to make clip art because, you know, I didn't want these designs to just disappear for all eternity. <laughs> uh, okay. And the next thing I did, a little, little tag, different little cluster, again, using the heart punch. I had a few of these little flowers and a few little jewels. So you know, bling it up just a tad. A lot of Irish dancing is full of bling these days. I went online and I went looking for Irish blessings. I made a whole page of Irish blessings and then I tore them apart 
and inked the edges and added those to this book. And that's where we sort of start to come into where I made a mistake, but I fixed it. So here's something for you to really get a grip on is that when we're playing and we're getting engrossed, there's usually always a solve if you make a mistake. We're getting there. We're getting there. So some little, little taggy bits, one of my rubber stamps. At a yard sale, I found some of these stickers that were all smiley faces in different color colors. So that is a fun little addition. This one I made is a little flip up. And this is just a journaling spot. Another flip up. So I had fun with the flip ups in this particular journal. Well, there we go. Okay, here it goes. I had printed out all of these Irish blessings. And I just went for it. I hadn't glued anything together yet, okay? <laughs> so I went ahead and I glued, I rubber stamped the corners. Um, I glued this down. I went, this is, you know, classic Irish blessing. I love it. It's got a wonderful meaning to it. It's beautiful. And then I got everything pasted in, all of my little pockets, all of my embellishments. And then I was going to do these flaps, which, as you might recall, the idea of these little flaps, and I did it right in the Scottish journal, is that these flaps were supposed to just be a pocket and glued down on the top and bottom which means that would have hidden the poem. And I went, uh-oh, now what do I do? I have these three sections and I've already messed up one. What am I going to do? Well, I can't do that because I didn't, I couldn't remove the poem. All right, so there's that. What can I do? Aha, I have some clear label material. So I cut one of these eight and a half by 11 sheets of clear label material in half. And I applied it. And that created the connection between this page and the flap that was supposed to be glued down. Because the other thing I had done is I sewed in the signatures first. I just went to town. I did all the embellishment with all three of these sections separate before realizing I wasn't supposed to put something there. But this is great. This worked out perfectly. This clear covering, it, it just comes all the way over on the flap. I paste it on an extra piece of journaling spot. And it's fine. It's... <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, so anyway, yes, I made a mistake, but I fixed it. I did it two times. and But you've got all this poetry now in here. So actually, you wind up with a little bit more in this journal than would have been originally. So anyway, from disaster to being okay. So here we go. I made a couple more journaling spots. The offcuts from these corners show up down here. Why not? More Irish blessings. More flip-ups. More little taggy bits. Little, little off-cuts from these different extra things. Rubber stamps. Extra pockets. And here's the other one. <laughs> So you can see in the, the kind of the shininess of it, I was able to burnish it down very well, but it doesn't detract from the overall effect. And I'm so glad it worked out. Clear label material, extra journaling spot, another blessing, another little punch. Again, kind of the same as in the front. This one opens this way, and another flip up. And maybe I had a bit of the luck of the Irish with me on that one. 
<laughs> we'll go with that, won't we? And we're back to the front. And we're back to our little buckle. And there it is. There's the Irish Journal and the Scottish Journal. And there they are. Here is the design laid out for you. This is for three 12 by 12 scrapbook papers. And in the Scottish Journal, I used a plaid paper that was white on the backside. And for the Irish Journal, it was solid front and back, very thick. Um, you know, cardstock weight, 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. So both worked really well. And that's up to you as to how much rubber stamping, if you want to do the, the white side full of rubber stamping or pasting up, collaging, whatever you want to do, you could do that. Or use a double-sided. You could use a printable if you, yeah, actually, eight and a half by 11. That's where you would have to modify a little bit. Um, but if you go to Seven Plaza on YouTube, she does it with different papers, so you could get an idea from there as well. I highly recommend you watch her video all the way through. Anyway, here is for your screenshot use. So there we have the Irish Journal and the Scottish Journals that I created. And I hope you're inspired and got a few ideas, something a little different. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to your comments. In the comments, be sure to like, of course. I don't always like to say that, but I know I sometimes need to be reminded too. So <laughs> I appreciate you watching. Um, and that's all for now. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.